In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, Saint Joseph, Saint Leopold Mondich, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today we celebrate in the Franciscan order Saint Leopold Mondich, is the, is the more popular name that I have ever heard of him. I heard the, in our Ordo, it has St. Leopold of Castronovo, and I said, I don't know who this saint is. But I looked it up, and it's St. Leopold Mondic, who was a Croatian, a Capuchin, who was a contemporary of Padre Pio. He lived, in, he lived at the end of his life in Padua, Italy, spending most of his time hearing confessions. He was another one of those kind of martyrs of the confessional. Uh, St. Leopold was a very small man. I don't think he was even five feet tall. He may have been like four foot ten. But he was a giant of a man in the sense of holiness and in, in the confessional of ministering to souls and reconciling them to God. And uh, was, a, was sought out by many people to go to confession to him. He was... Uh, uh, he sanctified others by spending his time in the confessional. And maybe it would be good to just reflect a little bit about the importance of, of the confession that we make, you know, of our sins. You know, sometimes our Protestant brothers and sisters accuse us Catholics because we have the sacrament of penance as somehow that's being a license to sin. And that's not what confession is. And matter of fact, I would think that the Protestants' notion of once saved, always saved, if that isn't anything but a license to sin, that the idea that since I'm now saved, I can do whatever I want, and even Martin Luther himself said, uh, believe and sin boldly. That seems a rather, a rather contradictory, but uh, that's a rather uh, more like a license to sin, someone that you think that because you're saved that you can do whatever you please and it doesn't matter, that is where the license of, to sin comes around. Anything, confession is where you have to make an accountability for all those sins. You have to confess them and you have to have true sorrow for them. Uh, this is the thing that maybe we should reflect on today is that that's an essential part of the confession is to have true sorrow for our sins. We can have imperfect contrition, which is sorry because we are go because of our sins and offending God, we are in, in danger of a you know, hellfire. But there's also the perfect contrition, which is uh, sorrow, sorrow for our sins because they have, the predominant motive is because they have offended God whom we love. Uh, and uh, sorry, that we have offended him for that primary motive and not because of punishment that is due to them. But uh, the nice thing about confession, the sacrament of penance, which maybe our Protestant brothers and sisters um, would like to be interested in, is that in the sacrament of penance, you don't have to have perfect contrition to be forgiven of your sins. You just need to have imperfect contrition to have forgiveness of your sins. Without the sacrament of penance, if you were in the state of, maybe you were dying and you needed to, to be forgiven of mortal sins and you didn't have a priest available to hear your confession, you would have to have perfect contrition, which is a very, uh, you know, that's a very great grace, which we pray that God would grant to all those, but uh, God normally gives us the ordinary means, which is confession to be forgiven of mortal sins. And, and uh, so that's why it's an added plus, you might say, to have the sacrament of confession available for those who are dying. But to elicit true sorrow for our sins means that we need to 
spend some time maybe before going to confession reflecting on what our sins have done to our Lord. Maybe as we become adept or we have the routine of going to confession on a regular basis, maybe once a week or once a month, we can fall into a sort of routine where we just think of what our sins are and go and confess, but our confessions may not have that a routine manner or not fall into that uh, temptation to just go through uh, the motions if we reflect even for a few moments. Uh, sometimes as we go to confession on a regular basis, we don't need to reflect so much on what our sins are because we, they are so readily right before our conscience. We need to maybe then reflect more often than uh, spend more time reflecting on what our sins are have done to our Lord and Savior, the, uh, the, the offense that they have done and elicit for ourselves uh, a greater sorrow for those sins. Because the greater the sorrow that we have for our sins, the more fruitful will be the sacrament of penance and maybe, and especially uh, may help us to stop falling into repeated sins all the time. Because of, of course, true sorrow for sins would mean that we are really wanting to stop offending God. And that means that if we have the greater the sorrow, then we'll have a greater incentive and motivation to not fall back into committing uh, those sins that we sometimes have a habit of falling into, whether they're venial or mortal. But especially, um, uh, we would do well to reflect on that aspect of the confession is eliciting greater sorrow for those sins. Say so today we, we uh, celebrate St. Leopold Mondich, especially during this month of May and Our Lady, since Our Lady so much wants us to, uh, from her message at Fatima, to stop sinning. Uh, it would be good to um, uh, reflect upon the importance of confession in this uh, work of ho overcoming sin in our lives and the graces that the sacrament gives to us in not only forgiving our sins, wiping away the sins, but also that the fact that the sacrament of penance strengthens us that we don't fall back into them. So what our Lord has left us in this great sacrament of penance it is sad that so many Catholics today are not making more use of it, the sacrament of penance. Everybody thinks that, uh, you know, they give other names for their sins, oh, mistakes or, or some kind of phobia or some kind of neurosis or whatever, but if they would probably spend more time going to confession, they wouldn't have to spend so much time on, on other things like psychiatrists and drugs and everything else that they do to somehow over, to override or to deny their guilt. Uh, the best thing to do with guilt is to confess it, and to confess it especially in the sacrament of penance. Let us today also thank God for uh, St. Leopold Mondich and pray that for priests who are hearing confessions that they may truly be the instruments and apostles of God's mercy as Pope Francis has proclaimed this year to be a year of mercy coming up, you know, that uh, many graces will be given to sinners and to priests who are the uh, ministers of this mercy of God in a special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.